our stream is active. Welcome to those of you who are just joining and welcome back to those who joined us for the Presidential State of the Institute, which was directly before this. This final live signature event as part of our inaugural virtual reunion and homecoming is Class Alive Online and features three current students at Rensselaer. Please make sure your volume is turned up. You will be muted throughout the presentation out of respect to our presenters. I would now like to reintroduce the Honorable Shirley Ann Jackson, PhD, 18th President of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Welcome, Dr. Jackson. Thank you. Welcome to our Class Alive event. You know, when I took on the leadership of, of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in 1999, I learned that while almost all of our alumni and alumni valued the rigor, of the education they had received at Rensselaer, many of them also found their time here needlessly joyless. And clearly that had to change. Rensselaer educates talented and highly original people who deserve to be inspired by their time in college because it does indeed take inspiration to be, a, to be and to even become a leader. So, in the Rensselaer plan adopted by our board in May of 2000, we promised a revolution. And that was, quote, an undergraduate experience that surpasses all others. Now, many things were required to achieve that ambition, including, importantly, improving the physical conditions in which our students live and learn, expanding our academic offerings in exciting emerging fields, and offering new opportunities in athletics and recreation. Possibly most importantly, however, was very consciously building warmth, a sense of community, and a sense of belonging into our student experience. So in 2001, we created our award-winning Office of the First Year Experience and the First Year Experience itself which helped our incoming freshmen to bond before their first classes even began and work with them throughout the first year to ensure that they had the best possible experience. In 2009, the class model was initiated. It stands for Clustered Learning Advocacy and Support for Students, which made those bonds even stronger throughout a student's career here at Rensselaer with two kinds of clustering residential and time-based. Residential clustering means that our students live in tight-knit groups in the residential commons, particularly in their first two years. And those upperclassmen who live off campus are networked together through the off-campus commons and the Greek life commons. With time-based clustering, we offer the right programming supports and opportunities for each developmental phase and stage as our students progress through Rensselaer. Today, the students who attend Rensselaer are as talented and, and as original as ever, and they're poised to take on the world and to change it. And so I'm delighted that you will have the opportunity to meet a few of them today, and importantly, to hear firsthand about their student experience uh, that we think we have succeeded in creating as being unsurpassed. And now I will turn the program over to Dr. Peter Konworski, our Vice President for Student Life. So to you, Peter. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. It's an honor to present this Class Alive uh, session this afternoon and for us to share with our community, whether they're faculty, staff, other students, or more importantly, our alumni, alumnae, and parents, a little bit about the experience of our students, the living, learning, Rensselaer experience through the lens of three current students. And I'm excited to begin this conversation with three incredible young people who will share their experience with cluster learning, advocacy, and support of students. And as class, as Dr. Jackson noted about class, it's the award-winning innovative pedagogical approach to living and learning at Rensselaer. And through mentoring, through guidance and support, and their co-curricular activities, CLASS connects students to a network of faculty, staff, and other peers, their student peers, ensuring they're a part of a strong community of learners. 
Now, as our students strive to become leaders for tomorrow, class helps by imbuing the principles of intellectual agility, multicultural sophistication, and of course, global awareness that will allow them to go off and change the world. So we have three incredible students you're gonna hear from shortly, all from different backgrounds and experiences and majors, um, but we're asking them to share their Rensselaer experience and the aspirations for their future. With that, as you see on the screen, I'm gonna quickly introduce them and then have them do an introduction. The first is Winder Alleman um, in the class of 23. He's an electrical engineering major. And as you can see, he's the Elwin Lackman class of 41 Memorial Scholarship recipient. Darby Steinman is our second student. She's a biomedical engineering student who also is a Severino Scholars Fund recipient. And Jonah Mudds is a class of 22 student um, studying information technology and web science. So I'm gonna ask Winder to start off and just continue with a little bit more of a personal introduction. Um, Winder, share a little bit about where you're from and your degree and a little bit of what you're involved with on campus. And then we'll proceed to Darby and then we'll end with Jonah. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, so my name is Winder Alleman. I'm originally from Dominican Republic, born there, but uh, I grew up in New York City. I am a sophomore here on campus. And as you saw, I am uh, an electrical engineering major. And on campus, I like to get involved with uh, athletics a lot. My favorite sport is basketball. And also a lot with uh, electrical, uh, electrical engineering fields like um, NSB or engineering ambassadors. Thank you. Darby. Hi, everybody. My name is Darby. Um, I'm a biomedical engineering major. I just completed my junior year, so I'm currently on my arch away semester right now. Um, I'm also affiliated with the women's mentoring program and also the RPI boxing club. So I do have leadership positions on those. So I enjoy mentoring people in both in both of those clubs. I'm originally from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Um, I'm the oldest of five kids, so I have four younger siblings who will maybe come to RPI one day. Um, and I'm really happy to be here sharing my experience with all of you. Jonah. There we go. Thank you, Dr. Konorski. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. My name is Jonah. I was born and raised in Northwest Ohio, about an hour south of Detroit, but I've also lived in California uh, starting in 2018 until the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. Uh, and now I'm back here in Ohio with my grandparents. Uh, I am pursuing a bachelor's in information technology and web science with a concentration in finance. Essentially, I learn how to apply technology in unique ways to solve complex problems. Um, at campus, outside of classes, uh, I'm involved in the men's track and field team. I'm also a frequent flyer of our hackathons that we host on campus, and I hold a number of student leadership positions uh, within our fraternity and sorority community. That's great. All right, so we'll start off, we'll talk a little bit about kind of your past, then the present, and then we'll look to the future. So let me just ask you each to think back to the summer before you came to Rensselaer, kind of before your freshman year. And if you think back to that period, you know, tell us a little bit about who you were back then um, and how you would relate to that younger you, you know, to the person you are today and kind of lean into where you've grown or changed as a result of that. And why don't we start, um, let's start backwards. We'll start with Jonah and then we'll do Darby and then we'll come back to Winder. Yeah, thank you. Uh, funny enough, that younger version of myself was just as excited and ambitious as I am today, uh, except today that excitement and ambition is directed at so many more opportunities. Um, for example, in that summer before freshman year at Rensselaer, I was just so excited to finally graduate high school and move out from home and really define how I spend my time. Um, I was excited for classes and to meet other students and academically who are as academically dedicated as I was. Uh, but today I'm excited to, to soon graduate from Rensselaer and move out into the world. Uh, I found that I'm really good at always keeping myself in a position to take advantage of the most exciting opportunities. And I expect to continue to doing that. And I know my time at Rensselaer will continue to bring the exciting opportunities as I navigate uh, the next few years of my career. How about you, Darby? I remember, especially the summer before I came to RPI, um, I was working three jobs, trying to, you know, get money for college, knowing, trying to figure out where I was going with everything. And I've always very much been somebody who, uh, if I have a problem, I want a solution to it right now. Like, I don't want to have to figure out a solution like later. I want it done now. And I feel like 
RPI has really showed me that I need to be able to make a plan, like a long term goal and kind of spread out my energy instead of wasting it all in one moment and tiring myself out. So just thinking back to before RPI, I wish like someone had told me, like, you don't have to have your whole plan freshman year, you know, like still I'm still I'm going into my senior year and I'm still figuring everything out. I do want to go to grad school, but, you know, it's just. Time, you know, figure out what works for you. And that was definitely something that I would look back and tell myself. That's good. Winder. Uh, so uh, that summer before attending RPI, I, I was for one excited, especially because I did the bridge scholars program where we come in for two weeks on campus, get to know the campus, informational sessions, and you also get to choose between taking Calc 1 or Physics 1 or early, kind of early. So I was excited for that. And through through Bridge, I ended up making friends. And a lot of those friends I'm still friends with now. And so after the, those, those, two, those two weeks in the summer, it made me more excited to come. Now that I knew that I had friends, I was excited to come see them again coming out of high school. And uh, with those friends and everything I learned from Bridge especially, it definitely helped me make better decisions. That, that helped me out up until now for all the information sessions that, we, that, that they were able to offer us. And it, uh, I'm definitely grateful for that. So let me just continue on this theme a little bit. Darby, you gave yourself a little bit of advice, but is there anything else you would advise each of your, your younger self to take advantage of or that you would you know, have changed in your you know, first two or three years now on campus? Yeah, definitely. I I would have told myself to utilize more of my professors and my TAs and, you know, the people that I had surrounded myself with freshman year because, you know, RPI has great mentorship programs, especially for freshman year for like chemistry, physics, calculus, where they specifically assign mentors to freshmen. And I really wish that I had taken time out of my day to kind of sit down with my mentors and like built a stronger foundation for myself back in freshman year because like if you don't do that you're kind of playing catch up with yourself a little bit so just and professors at rpi are great they're always willing to talk to you during office hours or like send them an email or anything like that and it's really only been in the past year maybe year and a half where i've really started to build a rapport with my professors where you know you know them on a more per personal basis they can kind of support you so I really wish that that was something I had started back in freshman year. That's great advice. Winder, how about you? Uh, advice you'd give either yourself or other freshmen thinking about, you know, how to maximize the Rensselaer experience? Um, oh, definitely one piece of advice would be, you know, don't, don't procrastinate. Because I know some of us coming out of high school, we may have that habit. We may have found, because, you know, every student here at Rensselaer is uh, a high-end student. So we may have found high school easier may come in with those habits and those are the habits we definitely want to break another one would be to definitely go at your own pace some people everybody moves at a different pace and sometimes you may feel like you're either too ahead or you may even be too behind the people around you and you do have to understand that you just have to move uh at your own at your own pace follow your own flow whatever works best for you and then doing so would definitely it'll definitely make the experience a lot better right jonah any thoughts yeah, for me, it's a perspective piece of advice. Um, if I were talking to myself, it's, you know, when you're in your classes, try to think about the content you're learning as tools and tools that you can sharpen with side projects. Uh, and then you can display these things to uh, career counselors or even uh, hiring managers to make sure that you use what you learn at RPI to, to benefit you later on in life. So it's really perspective. It's make sure that you're doing things outside of classes because those are what's really going to turn you into the student and the, and the man you want to be or a woman if you're a student. Right. So let's talk a little bit more about that, the present day, and each of you have been involved on campus. Tell us about a major difference that you think the Rensselaer experience has had on your life to date, and, and maybe think about that in terms of the people you've met, the relationships you've built, the courses you've taken, or the clubs you've been involved with. What, what, what have been a couple of those things that each of you have, you know, been changed as a result of those, uh, you know, those people or relationships? Um, why don't we start? Let's go back to Jonah. We'll start with you, and then we'll we'll go to Darby, and then uh, Winder. Yeah, yeah. Rensselaer showed me just how much there is to learn. It was really kind of an eye-opening experience. I went to a public high school, and I knew that technology existed, and that somebody had to build it, but I had no clue how it all worked. Um, the professors that I've been able to learn from at Rensselaer, especially in the ITWS department, 
um, have taught me what it takes to be a leader in the information technology industry, an industry that's shaping our digital world. So that perspective alone makes a major difference in my goals and ambitions, uh, really my understanding of what's possible and even how to expand that. That's great. Darby? I personally feel like, especially through a lot of the clubs and like the leadership positions that I've been in, I've really learned how to kind of stick up for myself and present myself as someone who is in a leadership position because, you know, I went to a very small private high school where, you know, everybody knew everybody. There was no really need to stick out or anything. And just coming to RPI, especially like joining the boxing team, which was obviously a very male dominated field. So you kind of need to, you know, put your shoulders back, be like, this is my space. This is who I am and be able to, you know, speak your truth and present your experiences very well. And that was really, something that I never thought that I would really need to do, but I've grown so much through that at RPI and I'm really thankful for that experience. That's great. Winder, how about you? Um, my experience is similar to, to Jonah's in the way that it really, it really opened my mind to, to the to specifically the STEM, the STEM field and more specifically the engineering field. Like for example, like me as an electric engineer, I take uh, electric circuits and they teach you how components work in a circuit, but then taking like a class like physics too, they break it down even more and teach you how the physics behind each individual component. And uh, it's those experiences like that with the way the classes are connected, they make you see how everything is connected and it really opens your, opens your eyes to the world and makes you see, makes you realize how much everything in the world is inter intricately connected to one another, which I find really, really cool and really uh, it, it, um, enhances the experience. That's great. Thank you. Thank you each for sharing those kind of perspectives. Let's talk now about literally the present day, but life through the pandemic. And I'm going to pose the question to you. You've really lived, some of you have lived through either three or four semesters, depending if you were taking courses last semester, sorry, last summer, but you've lived through a tremendously challenging experience. And even in this environment today, we're in a virtual reunion and alumni event, um, but you've been, you know, you've pivoted, you know, you had to pivot from last spring where you were in person to online and then you went into the fall semester and now you're in the, the spring semester so i want you to tell the audience a little bit about your experience maybe from each of your perspectives where are you right now where are you studying how has the class experience been what how have your faculty pivoted and changed those courses to continue to deliver this amazing pedagog pedagogical experience in this really dynamic environment so when i'm going to start with you because if i remember i think you're actually on campus so talk a little bit about kind of what your experience is, and then I know se several of you are not on campus. So, Winder, will you start us off? So the pandemic, it, it really did affect uh, the classes and classes, certain classes are definitely not the same online, uh, specifically classes where they include lab. And, you know, lab is definitely supposed to be a learning experience for you to really get to understand the topics at hand. So not being able to be hands on and really have to simulate most things um it, it is definitely a shift but it uh there's always a silver lining right so the professors understanding the tough times of pandemic they definitely made things more manageable for example class they become more like a work on your own pace you know they would upload the lecture you watch it whenever you can you do the assignments whenever you can you go to office hours whenever you can so the professors definitely made it more manageable and uh, right now yes i i am on campus and the professors, they, they do their best too. And, you know, you go in, they, we, for, for classes where you do have lab, you do go into lab. So you do get to still have that experience of, of in-person lab, but then like a go at your own pace on, online when it comes to lecture. So it's definitely a good balance. Do one of you want to jump in or Darcy or Dar sorry, Darby or um, Jonah, who wants to go next? I can speak a little bit on that. So I'm currently not in classes, but I did take my art semester completely online, which I mean, as Winder was saying, it's it's it is a massive shift. It's a completely different learning style. I know, especially for me as a BME student, um, I had a lot of group work and a lot of labs that were all online. So and I think one thing that you don't really think about when you're thinking of like online learning is, you know, how much more work group work becomes, especially for classes where it's laboratory, because then you're everyone has to run to Walmart and then it's well, what if 
one Walmart doesn't have what we need. And it's a lot more communication. So I will say my communication skills have gotten a lot better because of it. Um, but, you know, professors, like Winder was saying, they they try their best. I had a couple professors who just, like, completely restructured their entire class just to make it more, you know, suitable for an online environment. And it really went a long way to understand that professors were learning with us, and it was very much a learning curve. So having the communication between professors and students where everyone is just trying to work together to make everyone's lives easier, it, it was very helpful. That's great. Jonah? Yeah, for me, I've been a remote student taking classes from Ohio from my grandparents' house um, since March of 2020, since the beginning of the pandemic. And so to keep it somewhat cliche, it's taught me to adapt. Um, classes really didn't change much for me, but but how I went about, call it the time between classes, uh, really changed. Um, but after over a year of it now, I can see that it changed in as many good ways as it did maybe bad ways. Um, specifically, I'm involved in a number of leadership roles. I mentioned that earlier. And one of that role is I'm chairing a committee that's charged with putting together a slate of 16 undergraduate students from across the country. Um, it's much easier to do that in the pandemic with Zoom and the availability of all these resources that we have um, to put together that slate than it would have been prior to, to the pandemic. So in, in several ways, there's more resources available for our committees and things outside of classes to bring in people from across the country uh, than we would have had pre-pandemic. That's great. Let me actually just talk about this because you you've each mentioned different people and I think the relationships you build and the relationships you build, they help support you as you move forward are going to be crucial. A couple of you have mentioned faculty, a couple of you have mentioned, you know, the staff and other advisors, but talk about some of the people who have helped you throughout your career at Rensselaer, specifically faculty who've helped and how they've done that and how you've built those relationships, which you think will help propel you into the future. So who would like to go first? Anybody have a, a, an example they could share? Uh, I can go. So right. faculty, uh, they definitely they definitely do their best to to prepare you for what you do want to proceed. Like me in, in the in the electrical engineering department, you know, certain classes I'd be questionable about taking or what or or whatnot, and I don't know if I would have to take them. But then I'd have the the faculty or professors tell me, you know, you should do this if you want to do if you want to do to the if you want to pursue this plan, and it definitely helps. And they definitely prepare you for the future, as you know, telling you like, you know, if you want to pursue this type of plan, you should take these classes if you want to go into this concentration. And it definitely helps to narrow down. And also the the hub advisors, you know, they help you to make sure you graduate on time. They help you make uh, make up your plans for what classes you want to take. You will classes you want to take. That definitely helps make the process a lot easier than if you were to just have to do it on your own. Thanks. Darby, thoughts on fat? You've mentioned a few faculty, but faculty or other, you know, kind of critical relationships that you'll walk out of the Rensselaer experience with. Yeah, definitely. There's a couple like right off the top of my head, but um, I have a couple professors who I have done mentoring for for whatever particular classes, and I'll just shoot them an email just asking their opinion about an internship or a company or just. You know, what would you think about, like, I'm, I'm trying to decide my schedule, what's your opinion? And that's been really helpful because, you know, obviously I don't have that kind of like real world experience yet. So just knowing that there's like people I can reach out to is extremely comforting, really. Um, and then there are a couple of professors, you know, in the BME, BME faculty who they, I mean, the best way I can really put it is that they teach with such a passion that it kind of just like, makes you passionate about their subject as well. And that really has done the most for me, just having a professor who not only cares about what he's teaching, but cares that the students are learning it, like truly have a working understanding. Um, and that has honestly been one of the biggest impacts for me in my student career, so. That's great. Jonah? Yeah, for me, yeah. it's professors uh, Plotka and Professor Grill in the ITWS department. Um, these two are inspiring leaders in their own industries who spend part of their time teaching undergrads uh, how they became so successful. Um, they are connected with the industry and actually um, companies come to them asking them for referrals of students to hire. And um, for some reason, Professor Grill chose me for one of the roles and uh, I landed that role back in May of, of 2020 and I've had that ever since and I'll have it through graduation. And I've been able to take that role and really utilize it to get more internships like this upcoming summer I'm interning at IBM. Uh, and so I've used the relationships with Professor Grill and Plotka to really just springboard my career. That's great. That's great. All right. So let's 
continue on that. We'll talk about we'll kind of pivot to the arch. And one of the things that makes Rensselaer really stand out is the program that we've known as we call it to know as the arch and the arch is really an accelerator. And so let me start with Darby and Jonah. You've had the arch experience. Darby, you're actually doing something that's kind of self designed. Will you talk a little bit about that? And then we'll kind of um, come back to Winder for you to talk about your upcoming summer as you head into the arch and what you aspire to do. So Darby, why don't you start us off? So I actually elected to do a self design experience just because of, you know, everything with COVID and everything and taking all of those semesters online. I felt like it was best for me to kind of have something a little less structured. So I elected to do that, but I am currently doing a self designed research project under Dr. Dr. Alicia um, Wealth in the cognitive science department. And so I am studying the correlation between COVID-19 related stress and self-reported mental health issues. So I can't really speak on like the actual research I'm doing right now, but it has been a lot of, you know, learning how to submit an IRB, learning the language and how to write certain things. And she's been absolutely amazing um, mentoring me through that. She gives great thoughts, great opinions, is helping me become like a better writer, you know, dealing with all sorts of committees and stuff. And for me, I do eventually want to go into drug research someday. So I feel like it's very valuable for me to know, you know, this kind of terminology and everything. So I'm really excited about what I'm doing now. That's great. Uh, Jonah, how about you? Experience uh, both with the arch and experiential learning in your, your career, your academic career? Yeah, the, the first thing to note is I didn't actually have the formal arch experience. Uh, like I said earlier on the men's track and field team, which competes in both semesters. So a, a semester away wasn't quite doable. Um, but when I think of arch, I think of the activities that you do as a student um, outside of your classes that prepares you for your career. And so for me, that's been three summer internships, uh, a couple of hackathons and a number of challenging projects that I've been fortunate to have been a part of and even take lead on. Um, and so these are things along with the, the cluster learning in my classes I've taken that uh, in a way gave me a, a pseudo arch, if you want to put it that way. And Winder, as you prepare for this summer and, and beyond, what are you looking forward to and what do you think you're, you know, is, is on the, the uh, trajectory as you think about your future with the arch? Um, so I know that uh, my course load for, for this coming summer, I think is more manageable than previous previous semesters. So I am looking uh, forward to possibly doing research with one of the professors that, that I've had taken classes with. Uh, that would add a, a experience to my resume so that when I do my away semester, I would already have that added experience that can help me get an internship when I when I do my away semester. And then and hopefully with, with that, that research and that internship under my belt, and for, for later after graduation or after if I do pursue a uh, graduate school, then that, that experience could definitely help me and also probably help me narrow down like what, what concentration or field within electrical engineering that I would like to pursue. That's great. So let's talk about look at looking ahead in the future and let's just ask each of you to articulate, you know, what do you think you're going to see yourself in the postgraduate experience? And explicitly, you know, one of the opportunities is we always think of this as a networking chance. It's a chance for you to talk about what you aspire to do. And, you know, one of the things that our alumni always do is help open doors for our students. So talk about, you know, the path forward, what you see yourself doing. And in, in, in two of your cases, it's in the year ahead. In, in when to your case, it's in two years, but it, that will really accelerate now that you head into the arts this summer. But talk about the future. What do you think? What do you aspire to do? And um, in some ways, that's really an open invitation that all of our students, you know, we're trying to, you know, propel them into opportunities um, and give them, you know, as many open doors as possible. And, and our alumni are a big part of that. So, uh, Jonah, why don't we start with you? And you've talked a little bit about some of the experiential opportunities you've had in a couple of different um, organizations, including IBM this summer. And then Darby will come to you and we'll end with you, Winder. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Korski. Post-graduation is more than exciting, um, but I'm only a junior and this entire next year is really gonna be transformational for me. And in many ways actually dictates what those post-grad plans are. I mentioned that IBM internship, IBM has a, a history of turning interns into full-time. So there might be an opportunity there. Um, and actually in the spring of 2022, the semester I graduate, I'm planning a study abroad semester through the semester at sea program. So I'll, I'll spend a semester on a boat and I'll visit 14 countries in about 110 days. Um, and that can lead to so many opportunities. So I'm really trying to keep options open, but something I've stumbled upon recently is uh, product management rotational programs. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, basically um, the big companies you can think of, right? Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, they have a, a 
one and a half to two year program where you spend six months in different roles in different parts of the country and do some traveling to kind of experience what roles are out there and what you might be interested in. And then eventually you get placed in one of those roles. Um, so I can definitely see myself thriving in that kind of environment. Uh, I hope to get into one of those programs in the next year. That's great. Darby. Um, so currently my plan is I definitely do want to go to graduate school. Um, I do want to go, like I said it before, into some sort of drug research. I am particularly interested in things um, involving like cognitive disorders, mental health, stuff like that, because that's just kind of been an area that has kind of like weighed on my heart a little bit, you know. Um, so a little bit more short term, I'm looking for internships that I can do throughout my senior year because I do feel like um, I need a little bit more, you know, stuff for my resume, just, you know, to get that real world experience and everything. But um, as for that, I have no solid plans for anything quite yet. All right, thanks. Winder, how about you? What's your kind of two year trajectory toward graduation? Uh, so, I know a field within uh, electrical engineering that I'm interested in is nanotechnology. I believe one of the professors, Dr. Sawyer, that I had, I took a class course, a class with, uh, does uh, research under that. So that's the research I'm hoping to do for the summer. Uh, post graduation, then I am like the Darby. I am thinking of pursuing a master's within the within electrical engineering to um, to further enhance my knowledge or focus more on the concentration that I do end up choosing, which could be nanotechnology. Something else I'm interested in is telecommunication. So that's, a, that's a field that I'm really uh, passionate about. Uh, so that's that's really much what my plan is. That's great. So let's keep going on that. As we think about you know your Rensselaer education and how it's helped prepare you, how do you think you'll be able to be a contributing member to the Rensselaer community after you graduate? Um, and then let's talk a little bit about our mantra or motto. We talk about, you know, why not change the world? Are we preparing you? How are we preparing you to go off and make a difference in the lives of others throughout society? So can you each talk a little bit about, you know, you'll give back to the Rensselaer community, no doubt. You've always been active citizens on our campus, but how do you think you'll give back to the broader society? So um, who wants to start us off on that? Uh, I can start. So, right. um, I definitely, well, we definitely can pass on the wisdom that we learn uh, throughout these four years to, to uh, the people who will be coming up, right? And, you know, we could teach them to not make the same mistakes. So, you know, opportunities that we have had, but we may have to pass down for whatever reasons, we can pass those opportunities to to the people, to the people below us, and then maybe they can take on those opportunities. Um, you know, in terms of the Rents the Year's motto, uh, why not change the world? Uh, one of my one of my favorite quotes from Nelson Mandela, I believe, is you know it's only impossible until it's done. And uh, since from a young child, I was always a curious person, and I always wanted, I always had the questions about our universe that you know we may or may not have answered by now. And I always wanted to tackle these problems and be able to find the solutions to these to these uh, uh, mysteries about our universe. And hopefully, I can be a part of a project or, or whatever the case is that uh can can tackle these problems that can make our life uh, our society much better place that's great darby do you want to give us some insights into what's next in your future and con contributing back to both rensselaer and society so i mean as it's been mentioned i'm part of the women's mentoring program so you know i did have like a, a mentor my freshman year and everything and i feel like that's kind of the same idea once you move on to graduate school or you just graduate it's it's turning around and coming back to rpi students and saying like let me mentor you like let me show you the steps that i've taken that have made it easier for me and so i would really love to, you know, support RPI women as they go into the workforce because, you know, we need more of us out there and everything and we should be supporting each other, you know, women supporting women. And I really feel like, you know, for the mantra, like, why not change the world? You know, one of the best things that RPI does is they allow students the chance to, you know, really explore things that they are interested. You know, you have classes like intro to engineering design where they basically just hand you a notebook and they say, you know, find a problem and how would you fix it? You know, and they, some amazing projects come out of things like that. And just allowing students to like funnel their creative energy into things that they truly care about, I, I believe is how we will change the world. 
Jonah, what do you think? Yeah, at Rensselaer, um, I've been able to see the impact that alumni can, can make in students' lives uh, firsthand. Um, I've seen how this Rensselaer community is more than welcoming to undergrads, graduates, pr prospective students, and absolutely alumni. And because alumni are so welcome to engage with clubs, organizations in the school, um, I'm excited to be an active alumni where I, I'm in those shoes and I can give back to not only the school, but also the clubs and organizations that I've been a part of along the way. Uh, and it's really those connections that have made Rensselaer Rensselaer. Right, right. All right. Well, so let's sort of wrap up this conversation with a little bit about life outside of the classroom. And you, you each have mentioned some of the engagements on campus. And so talk a little bit about, you know, the circle of friends you've built, the community in general. Um, and then maybe we'll talk, uh, maybe just with, we have a couple minutes left about some of the anecdotes about going to school at Rensselaer, what makes it a special place or the traditions or even what you've explored in upstate New York. Some of you, this is a new part of the world that you've never lived before. So let's start with the community outside of the classroom. How have you built that with friends and peers and classmates? Um, let's see, Darby, why don't we start with you? Sure. I mean, a lot of my friends that I have currently are actually the people that I lived with in my freshman year. You know, we were all in the same dorm or, you know, we were sharing classes, you know, because a lot of the engineering classes, everyone has the same class freshman year. So all of those are people that, you know, I bonded with and we've really stuck together throughout the years and everything. So, you know, I'll have those friends for like the rest of my life. Um, but, you know, we love to go visit downtown Troy. There's lots of coffee shops and everything. And we'll just go sit and, you know, work on a paper or something for a couple hours and just drink coffee together. So that's definitely something we love to do. Um, and I mean, especially through, you know, like COVID and everything, we've really understood the value of like being together, like being in the same place. Because a lot of us have been moved around and everything. And it's really put much more value on our friendship so that's great thank you um let's see jonah thoughts on that yeah that really made me uh, think of navigating Rensselaer and beyond when i was a freshman back in 2018. Um, i did an overnight trip where i went backpacking through uh, buck mountain up by lake george and i met students i met sophomores on that trip who were nrb advisors and that kind of led me to uh, inadvertently to this fraternity life thing that I do. And um, it's an immediate family that I've been a part of, and also the athletic family at RPI that I've been a part of because of the track and field. Um, and so through those aspects, uh, I've never felt anything but comfortable at Rensselaer. Um, and, and it's been incredible. That's great. Linda? Um, so like I mentioned earlier, since I did Bridge, I had friends coming in and many of those friendships that I had from Bridge I still have now, they're one of my closest friends. Friends that I met through them became one of my closest friends as well. And also through um, through athletics, through basketball, I also have those, those type of friends. And it definitely helps having all these, all these different type of friends that you can hang out with depending on the occasion, you know, from all different types of backgrounds. So you get, you know, different perspectives on, on everything in, in culture, food, or even within the, the STEM field with all the different majors that they have among them. So it's definitely, definitely a good experience and it, it helps and it, and it helps being here on campus, having so many people that you can, you can talk to, you know. Right, right. Let me just round out because we have time for just one or two more questions. Um, you know, when you think a little bit about the traditions on campus, and a lot of you have already mentioned ones, and I know these are close to Dr. Jackson's heart, the first year experience in the residence hall, navigating Rensselaer and beyond, you know, our athletic community. Um, talk a little bit about those traditions on campus that have brought your uh, classmates together, what makes it special. And then also, I'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, Darby, you just mentioned Troy, you know, what's something unique about the Troy community or the, the you know, kind of the beauty of upstate New York that you've had a, a chance to experience maybe, you know, day trip, road trip activity in the in the greater capital area that you wouldn't have had a, had opportunity to do if you hadn't been a Rensselaer student. So, um, Joan, I'm going to start with you and then we'll come to Winder and then we'll end with you, Darby. So my favorite traditions um, actually aren't even the official traditions that might be near and dear to people's heart. It's um, as an upperclassman, I've been able to engage with a lot of uh, freshmen this last year who have been, you know, experiencing a, a different Rensselaer. And so I've been able to show them the restaurants in Troy, uh, things like Ted's Fish Fry, Dino Barbecue, things like that, where um, freshmen weren't able to experience Troy ahead of time. And so as an upperclassman who's been through these uh, informal traditions, I get to share those with freshmen and kind of see them light up as they learn more about Troy and our community. 
That's great. Linda, what do you think? Tradition or kind of uh, experience in Troy? Um, like like Jonah, now that I'm on campus for this semester, because I wasn't last semester, I was able to meet the freshmen and, you know, we, we became really cool and like me and my friends were able to, you know, give them advice on, you know, certain classes they should they they, they should take or like the best studying tips for, for certain classes that we already took. So we know, you know, we know the things that would make that class that much easier. You know, me, me and my friends, we like to, uh, we, we, use, we do head down to Troy to eat every now and then, or we like to bike through, through the town. We also like to head to Albany, which is not too far away, you know, go to the mall or whatever is around. And sometimes also we'll, um, we'll like head to, the, head to the mountains, you know, a little bit of hiking or a little bit of skiing. That's great. That's great. Darby, how about you? The last uh, sense of traditions and the, you had first started us off on your favorite coffee shops in Troy, but what else? What else have you experienced in the area? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely one of my favorite things to do to R at RPI is um, me and all of my friends, we are hockey season ticket holders, so we get those every year. And so hopefully we'll be able to go see the RPI hockey team, you know, in the upcoming semesters and everything. But, you know, just going to a hockey game on like a Friday night with your friends, you know, cheering us on and everything. It really is, I think, something every student should experience at least, you know, once. Um, but other than that, yeah, we just love walking Troy. The shops there are amazing. Everyone's friendly. Um, we love just experiencing whatever. We'll just pick a street and walk down and like window shop the entire way. So, yeah, we love hanging out in Troy. That's great. Um, well, I'm going to wrap up and certainly if Dr. Jackson, if you have any questions, we'd love to take them. But I, I just want to say before we do, uh, you all have done an amazing job today. But on top of that, I want to congratulate you. Not only are you scholars in your own right, but every one of you have mentioned giving back and not just giving back to the community and through through service, but really mentoring and lifting the next generation up. And each of you in your own way have done that. Um, whether it's through the clubs or organizations, whether it's through your involvement on campus or it's the next generation of students. And, and so I just want to thank you for inspiring them by your example and continuing to do the good work. And I want to say that one of the benefits of being part of a program like this is our alumni often will open their doors to you and they will, you will I would not be surprised if many of them reach out directly to say, hey, here's an idea or a lead or an opportunity or a phone number or an email address to, to continue to build our network. And I think the strength of the, the um, alumni community is really the strength of this incredible group of people with us today. So um, I'm gonna actually just ask Dr. Jackson, is there anything you'd like to add, ask or add to this esteemed panel? Well, I would I would add simply this. Um, I one have enjoyed listening, and it's uh, taught me a lot. Uh, and and the maturity is astounding. But I'm and I'm not surprised really. But what I also enjoy is what you represent. Uh, you grew up in different ways in uh, different parts of the country, indeed, coming from different parts of the world. But yet here you are in this time and place, and. And so I'm gratified uh, that you have gotten as much out of being here as you have articulated. I was going to ask you, would you come again? But I know you want to get on with your lives. But I think, Deirdre, you said maybe your younger siblings you know, may come here. So I'll take that as a yes, uh, that at least love to see other family members uh, come. And so, Jonah, I assume that, you know, you, you really navigated your way and, and been who you are. And, and you've been very successful. And for Rensselaer to let you be who you are and, and across this range, I think, says its own story. And then, uh, Winder, you talked about uh, coming through Bridge and, and forging early and lasting friendships. And, and that's a gift you know, in life if you can uh, have people who are with you. And it sounds like that a number of them will be with you through your life. And so, I will, you know, just thank all of you and wish you well. And if there's ever anything I can do for you, uh, you let me know. Take care. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. And I just want to close by thanking you each for participating today. Um, and on behalf of the Institute, just continue to wish you well and for your own health and safety. I know it is a challenging time, especially as we end the semester, but you know, we really appreciate your participation in the virtual reunion and homecoming events and you know, really sharing your story and telling us a little bit more about the true Rensselaer experience from where you sit. So thank you. I'm going to turn it back over to our MC as we wrap up this session. So thanks. 
Thank you to Thank Dr. You. Jackson, Dr. Konorski, Winder, Darby, and Jonah, and all of you in attendance for joining us today. You will be receiving an email within the next few days with a brief survey asking for feedback on virtual reunion and homecoming. Please let us know what you thought of the events you attended to help us plan for future virtual events. Thank you in advance for your input. Please also follow the Rensselaer Institute Advancement YouTube channel for today's recording, along with all previous virtual event recordings. Finally, even though we can't be together in person, you can leave a legacy to the next generation of Rensselaer alumni and alumnae by joining your classmates, teammates, and friends in support of your reunion and homecoming class gift. Visit impact.rpi.edu slash g slash reunion. Thank you, stay safe and healthy, and have a great rest of your day.